everyone and thank you for joining us here on the Recruitment Roundup podcast which is brought to you by BMS Performance. For those of you that are joining us for the first time, BMS Performance is a specialist sales and marketing recruitment consultancy. For the last 30 years, we've been helping businesses across the UK recruit for vacancies at every level. I'm your host, Mike Leather, and every week I'll be joined by a new guest where we'll get stuck into the latest trends in regards to recruitment. We'll talk about insights, we share ideas, we share experiences, and ultimately we look to provide value to fundamentally help you, you know, whether or not you're a hiring manager, a business leader, or part of an internal talent team to recruit smarter, faster, and more effectively. So welcome back everyone to another episode of the Recruitment Roundup podcast. I'm your host, Mike Leather. I'm the co-host, Sam Musiadira. Hey Sam, how's it going? All good, Mike. All good. How are you? All right. I'm all right. We're getting towards the final straight now, aren't we? Yeah, not long to go now. Not long to go. How many not weeks before Christmas? Two and a half, three Two weeks? Two and a half weeks. This is my last yeah. day. I'm off to Lapland for a couple of days, so we're oh. looking forward to that. Oh, that's um, very exciting. I am, and the weather's only minus seven, so... That's not actually too bad. It was minus 27 last week, which wow. I was getting a little bit nervous about taking a bit um, <laughs> to somewhere. That was that cold, but I yeah. think it'll be okay, given the amount of layers that we've got. Yeah, of course. So, yeah, so it's exciting. Um, but we wanted to jump on today to have a, a, a really organic conversation, I think, of, of, of a subject that I know me and you are both really, really passionate about, yeah. and that is like self-development. Um, I think we're at a point in the year now where a lot of sales professionals will be hopefully reflecting on the last 12 months and thinking about like how have I done this year, what are the things that I've got better at, what are things that maybe I haven't got better at that I wanted to get better at, um, what do we need to do next year to improve yeah. further and I think like talking personally, um, one of the things that's helped me succeed in to this point in, in my career has been a real appetite for learning and yeah. for self-development. So yeah. I thought it'd be good for us to come on and have a chat around the things that we can do in work, um, things we can do outside of work yeah. to develop as salespeople, but develop as, as people as well, right? Um, and then just to finish off with, you know, why does this matter? So hopefully sales professionals, sales leaders that are listening might pick up a few nuggets of information a bit of wisdom from us that might yeah. help them reflect on the year might help them start next year with a bang yeah sounds really good mike sounds really good it's a great topic so yeah very very excited mm. to get stuck in and yeah hopefully share some tips some ideas and yeah hopefully it's something that we can all sort of learn from um so yeah let's let's get into it yeah let's get into it so um I'll kick it off because i think all self-development starts with a growth mindset doesn't it like you, you anything that you do from a self-development standpoint is something that you are proactively yeah doing yourself and if yeah. you're doing it yourself it's because you want to improve yeah. you want to get better yeah. um and the growth mindset comes in the fact that you want to learn yeah because that's what a growth mindset is, isn't it? It's learning yeah. from failures. It's learning from successes. It's always looking at a situation with perspective and thinking, yeah. like, how can I take something from this that yeah. is going to make me feel better? And yeah. you can dip in and out of a growth mindset. But yeah. all top professionals in, in any sector, yeah, they talk about growth mindset. And, like, whether you're yeah. in recruitment, whether you're in sales, whether... Yeah you are like a professional sports person like you never stop learning do you yeah no absolutely. you always want to keep getting better you always want to um even relearn the things that you already know to yeah. make them sharper and like yeah. freshen up on yeah. subjects yeah um but it, it can only start with a growth mindset not a fixed mindset which is i already know everything yeah can't improve yeah I'm brilliant. I hope, thankfully, we don't work with many people, if any, that are like yeah. that. Um, <laughs> but question for you. So, like, yeah. in work, and you can mm. answer this practically, and, and yeah. I, I can also talk as well from my experiences. Like, what are the things that 
you do yourself. Yeah. From a self development standpoint, like in work to help you like continue to improve and to learn. What are some of the key things that you do? Yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's a really, really good question, Mike. And if I think about it in work specifically, um, what I feel like is really important for me and what's really helped me is just the real want and desire to keep on learning, but learning from people that um, are, are better than me, you know, people that have been doing the job for a very long time, uh, but also um, learning from, you know, people that are coming, you know, new with new some sort of fresh ideas, right? So yeah. um, the, the things that I feel like I've been able to do and learn is ultimately, you know, learn through osmosis. Um, I take pride in terms of when we're in the office and we're within that environment of, you know, being sat next to, you know, some of the guys that have been, you know, with BMS for, you know, 10, 20 plus yeah. years, um, listen to some of the conversations that they have, you know, and thinking, oh, oh you know, um, Rob said that, you know, Dean said that. Um, I hope they don't, you know, I'm sure they won't mind the plugs. You know, Russell um, said that to that candidate, you know, so, Ross. yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> like, I, I suppose from, from, from my end, it's just, just listening and like absorbing all the good, all the good yeah. golden nuggets that everyone's sharing. But equally, um, we've also got, you know, um, a growing team, you know, people that have come in with some sort of fresh ideas and new ways of working. And um, yeah, just listening to, oh, you know, what did, you know, what did Harry say about on this cold call? Um, I like that introduction. Or could I use that with, you know, with my personality and within my style? And um, can I put that as part of my cadence for some of the people that I'm looking to speak to as well? So um, I think specifically when it comes to being in work is just, you know, learning by osmosis and surrounding myself with, you know, people that are obviously, you know, have different, different strengths. And, but just keeping my ears open, really keeping my ears open to, you know, or, you know, take your notes as that sounded good. Can I use yeah. that? And I think that's how I've been able to try and develop that within within work as, as, as an example to answer your question. I think, um, yeah, the osmosis thing is, is, is so, yeah. so important, isn't it? It's probably like number one for me, but there's, there's the person that intentionally yeah. tries to do it. Yeah. And then there's the person that like passively yeah. tries to do it and the passive yeah. person does it more just through like luck but yeah. like the person that's intentional yeah it's the one that is operating like with a, yeah. with a growth mindset and is actually aware of it absolutely um, i think <clears throat> might go off on a bit of a tangent now but these mm -hmm. things that we have on um and this is for anyone listening right that works yeah. in an inside sales environment because yeah. everyone has these things on yeah have a look around your office yeah. and when people aren't in a conversation, just count how many people have still got these on. Yeah. And sorry, guys, for and the people it. that listen to the audio version, uh, I'll let you yeah. come back in, Mike. Mike's yeah. pointing at his, 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 his giant yeah. headsets. Yeah, really, yeah, so. yeah. Thank yeah. you for that. Yeah. yeah. So we're talking about headsets, right? Yeah. We all have headsets on. Even field sales people that are probably working from home have yeah. headsets on, right? And the working from home thing is something we can we, we can come on to with the osmosis piece in a bit. Um, but if you're in an office just and you're a sales leader or a salesperson, just count how many people that when they're not on a conversation have still got these headsets on. Yeah. Because of the environment we work in now, yeah. we're accustomed to sitting with these on. And the byproduct of that is not as much osmosis is happening. Yeah. So therefore people aren't listening to all the more experienced people around them. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and it's even a case of just being aware of that and just whipping them off, taking yeah. one of the earphones off yeah. so you can hear something that someone's yeah. saying. And like you said, oh, that's a great question. Yeah. Um, but then there's the, the, there's observing what people are doing as well. Right. So yeah. like you're looking at someone and how they're operating their day and how they're maybe using tabs on, on a system, how they're actually, um, using notes, yeah. what their setup is like. You know, all of that can help you improve. And sometimes it's these real basics that if yeah. they're not pointed out, then we just, we, 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 we're not aware of them. But yeah. I think that's a one that people don't often yeah, think absolutely. about and it has an impact. Yeah. And then like, if you're working from home as well, because we've got an environment now where the large majority, if you're field sales, you're working from home when you're not at meetings or if you're even in the office, you're hybrid. You're not in the office all the time. So there's days when you're working from home. So that osmosis effect is then like dampened even further. 
So it means that when you're in the office, take even more care and attention in actually listening to the things that are going on around you. And like just on 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 this point as well, um, I think one of the things that people could 100% do is just grab someone who's a top performer and say, "Can I just shadow you for yeah. like an hour? Like, when's the last time someone actually listened to this? Did that?" who might actually be at a decent place but wants to get better. Yeah. I was like, right, what, I'll, what I'm going to do is try and grab that person for an hour and just yeah. ask them, Absolutely. what are they doing? What have they done differently this year to become better at their job? Yeah. Yeah. What are the things they noticed that they needed to improve on? How can I then learn from that? Because yeah. you can want you take ownership of all of this stuff. Absolutely love that, Mike. And what you'll find as well is people love to help. Yeah, they you know, do. Like yeah. people love to help people that are top performers within any business or any industry, unless you've got something really, really wrong with you. You always want to see people do well because we always tend to draw back as to, you know, what was it like for me when I first started my first journey, either within sales or when I first started the job, um, you know. So I really, really love that point. But what I also think is really interesting, this oil also boils down to, it sounds like you are saying, Mike, the office is an opportunity, right? Yeah, when we're in that environment is. and we're around people um, and we are, we've got this opportunity to be able to listen, to learn, um, to copy, to copy behaviors, it's an opportunity for us, right? So um, what you want to do as a sales professional is you want to make sure that you don't miss out on that opportunity. Those days that you're in the office, those days that you are around that top performer within the business, you're looking to, you know, have a look and see what tabs that they're opening, how they're using their data, how they're obviously, you know, po popping notes on the CRM, um, how they are making calls, what are the, some of the things that they're saying, but then to go a step above is to have that growth mindset and really humble yourself and be like, you know, look, Mike, um, would you mind if I sat next to you for an hour? You know, I really want to, you know, shadow you and learn a bit more. So it's also still having that that, that growth mindset that, you know, yeah. I want to learn, you know, and reaching out and wanting to, to do that. So, um, yeah, um, I love I love those points that you that you led with. We're going back to that intentionality piece, though. Yeah. Is it what you just said there is you want to do that. Mm. And that's the growth mindset, isn't it? Yeah. So one, it's I want to improve, I want to get better, I want to learn that just to finish off on kind of this point in the in work piece and we know that there's going to yeah. be loads of other things that people can think about that they can do in work um as well but we want to just highlight some of our top points yeah. it is like old school call, call recordings like record conversations not for people to to share with your manager or yeah. to feel like you're in the spotlight yeah. but for you to self-assess yeah. your own performance and highlight the things about right so in that conversation what were the things that I missed? Yeah. What were the things that I didn't pick up on that would have changed yeah. the outcome? Also, again, if you're someone that doesn't actually make too many phone calls, maybe you do a lot of meetings because you get your meetings booked for you. Yeah. There's so many AI note, note takers out there yeah. that you can download that will sit in the meeting yeah. and you'll be able to see a transcription and yeah. you can still do the same thing there. Yeah. Because very rarely... Does anyone come out of a meeting and think, I 100% aced every single section of that meeting? There's yeah. absolutely nothing that could have gone better. It doesn't happen, does it? Even yeah, it if you're the best happen. salesperson in the world, there's always something mm -hmm. that you can improve on. And sometimes yeah. these are things that you're not aware of in the meeting, yeah. but having assessed a meeting afterwards, you're actually like, yeah, that's, I could have done that a little bit different, yeah. or maybe if that's that. Absolutely, Mike. And it all comes back to sort of that mindset, right? And sticking to those basics, um, you know, recording those calls and not from a big brother perspective, but just genuinely thinking, you know, what could I have done better here? You know, yeah. a, an, an analogy of that would be, you know, people that operate within, within sport, you know, it's just like if you've got a massive game against um, another team, you want to look up the, the video footage of, you know, the things that they're doing well, but also you can look at the video footage of the stuff that you didn't do well. So yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah. also um, looking at, at it, it works its way back. But then the key thing is, yeah, listen to those calls, listen to those recordings um, and using all that data to try and get better um, within within each day sort of going forward. Um, Mike, obviously, I don't want to get your thoughts on this because it sounds like we're talking about, you know, a strategy to want to learn equally on yeah. insights and, and meetings. But yeah, um, other things that 
other people could do would be, you know, I love the idea. I know we're recording a podcast now, but actually listening to podcasts as well, mm. you know, um, podcasts that could either be, you know, sales related ones. Um, I know that there's, you know, loads of really, really good podcasts out there. And I don't want to plug too many, but, you know, there's even short ones. Um, I listen to one called Daily Sales Tips into my, yeah. um, onto my work, into the office, into, into, on my walk into the office, you know, some of them, you know, five minute bite size ones where, yeah. you know, this, this is the tip of the day, Con- consider doing that. And, you know, some people might not always have the time to be able to do, but there's ways. Um, so, you know, listen to that type of material, consuming that material and even, you know, reading, you know, because maybe some people aren't people that yeah. you know, tend to listen, but people that tend to like, you know, want to read. So, you know, while it goes with that, with that strategy, I think it's a good, um, a good time to bring in a couple of those points as well to, to add on to what you said. Well, obviously we're biased towards podcasts yeah. um, because we, <laughs> we've got this one, but yeah. again, if you said to me, what's the single um, biggest impact um, that anything has had on your like development and career outside of experiences within a job it would be um investment of time into yeah. podcasts that improve the things that i want to improve on to be better yeah. in all aspects of my yeah. of my life uh, yeah. because we're talking about how to improve in 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 work now and improve performance through self development, but these are the things yeah. now we're moving on to outside of work. So yeah. sort of things I think about is yes, podcasts around um, the sector that I, I work in, yeah. so that I know what other recruitment companies are are doing, um, yeah. how we can have a competitive advantage over them, and to make sure we're relevant and to date with the market, like sales yeah. tips, yeah, but like mindset, yeah like so important isn't it like it underpins everything there's so many good podcasts out there Mm -hmm. and you said just then about people don't all might not have the time you 100 percent do have the time and i think that's something people have got to be like realistic with themselves about yeah um you've got 24 chips to cash in Mm -hmm. in a day if you think of 24 hours in a day it's totally up to you how you spend them you know we spend six seven eight hours sleeping you know you're telling me that you can't find half a chip Mm-hmm. somewhere across the day mm-hmm. to actually vote to consume content or yeah. be that podcast be that books or whatever it might be yeah. um to actually help you improve you you always can it's about that one it's about that desire it's about what yeah. can actually sacrifice then yeah. is it half an hour on netflix yeah is it just half an hour you know gaming or something like that yeah. everyone's always got something yeah. that they can pull back, that they can sacrifice yeah. Yeah. for something else. Yeah. Um, and then it's a case of, you know, if we're doing that sacrifice to get better at something, do we make an agreement with ourselves? Right, we're going to do this for a couple of yeah. months. Let's focus on, 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 on this. Just on the books, what have been, um, put you on the spot now, I'm a big fan of reading books as well. Yeah. What books have had the biggest impact on you? Ooh. A great question you really have put me on the spot and um, um oh look me um i listen well in terms of books it's probably two um yeah. i really do love i'm a massive stephen bartlett fan um so he okay. doesn't need any yeah. more plugging but i loved sort of happy sexy millionaire um, oh, okay. so that's a really really good book uh, but there's a real there's a book that like is, is stuck with me and um i've forgotten who who wrote it but it's a book called the, the chimp paradox yeah, Steve uh, Peters. Steve yeah. Peters. Yeah. There we go. So, um, I always, anyone who works in recruitment, always tell you that like, don't get too high, don't get too low, try stay even keel. And it was only sort of when I read that book and I thought about just mindset and, you know, triggers and things like that. Um, those are, you know, that's a book that's probably shaped me. And the final book um, is by one of my well, my all-time favorite sportsmen. It's not Michael Jordan. Uh, Tiger Woods is a close second, but it's actually um, a guy called Daniel Carter, um, who oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. was, um, you know, a famous all-black sort of fly half. And um, yeah, I sort of learned a lot. He's got two books i've forgotten the name of the first one um that you um that you recorded but um yeah any anything of any one of those three are, are books that i could you know go over um again and again um what about what about you so 
Um, I think the Dan Carter book you're talking about is the art of winning. I'm sure. Yeah, there, well. we there we go. There we go. Yeah, it is. I'm not into <laughs> rugby, but I do like. Yeah. Um, I do like listening to podcasts and books from rugby players as well. Just yeah. the environment that they brought up in is a really yeah. good one. Um, so for me, also, yeah, big fan of um, Shimp Paradox by Steve yeah. Peters. I actually think his yeah. new book, which is Pathway Through the Jungle, yeah. that's a bit bigger, um, yeah. is one to get stuck in. So it goes into more depth. Yeah. I think the book that's had the biggest impact on me is Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willink and Leif Babin. They're two ex-US um, Navy SEALs, and it is literally... Yeah what it says on the tin yeah. um, and it's something that I always do all the time in every aspect of my life is <clears throat> rather than blame anyone else is what, what could I have done differently by taking ownership and it's a tough thing to do extreme ownership it's an amazing book yeah. um, it really is I would highly highly recommend it to yeah. anyone um, yeah. but you know as, as sales professionals that's the that's the thing. As as any you know, again, any yeah. professional, yeah. Best thing you can do is try to take ownership and that's where yeah. the learnings come from because there's always something you can take ownership of, whether it's a good situation, a bad situation. Yeah. Um, to improve further. Just going down the, the sales route as well for people listening. Um one of my favourite sales books is Gap Selling by Keenan. Yeah. I think that's excellent. Yeah. Um it's a must read for anyone in a consultative or solution yeah. cell environment yeah absolutely love that one okay um just to slightly um change the direction of the conversation but still yeah. things outside of work i think one thing that we don't talk about which is definitely a self-development area and this is a self-development area for me is um the ability to disconnect yeah so i talked about the yeah. beginning of this conversation um, I'm off to Lapland. I'm going to do my very, very best to disconnect, yeah. but it's definitely a weakness of mine. Yeah. I find it hard to fully switch off, yeah. but it's difficult then because there's that saying, isn't it? I think Stephen Bartlett saying you can you yeah. can't pull from pour from an empty cup. Yeah. Um, but also, I think if you're constantly stuck in the weeds of a situation, yeah. you then find it difficult to. Yeah. look for the overall solution without trying yeah. to sound too cryptic and I think yeah. disconnecting yeah. is the right thing I think like my best funnily enough my best ideas for work actually come on a Saturday and Sunday morning when yeah. I'm in the gym and I'm not thinking yeah. about work yeah. and something pops into my head yeah that's because I've disconnected but I, I think that's a real thing people could yeah. look at and you know we're talking about all the hard stuff like the osmosis and the top you know shadowing top performers and yeah. being proactive with your podcast but this is another thing yeah. that is as important absolutely mike and i'm really really pleased you said that um because it's such a it's something that a lot of people sort of take for granted um and i know that you know there's a there's a real close link especially between sort of physical health and mental health um yeah. and um i know that i'm at my best when i've got a real balance of you know, being able to you know go to the gym a few days a week, being able to you know in the summer you know go out and play a bit of golf to just, and my best ideas sort of tend to come when I'm in those environments. Mm. Um, you know, you've spoken about the challenge of being able to, to to switch off. I really struggle with that as well. Like I'll find myself you know having a, a really good conversation with my wife and I'll lean into just sharing with her what's happened within recruitment. She's <laughs> like, oh Sam, stop! Don't you have a day off, right? Um, but that's just how I'm wired, you know, and um, yeah. It's it's so so important to be able to to take a step out of things and to be able to just you know, take a deep breath. Um, it's funny that you actually say this. So one of my favourite role models growing up, still look up to him a great deal, is Dwayne the Rock Johnson, um, oh, and yeah, he actually um, recorded just a brief video. I think he just record, recorded Moana too. Mike, I know you're a oh, massive yeah, yeah, fan, we'll massive fan of that. In a couple of weeks, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, he made a post on Instagram, I think going back a couple of days, and I really, really resonated with me. I'm probably going to share it as one of my LinkedIn ideas this week. But um, he spoke about, um, he got asked an interview question, well, a question as part of you know his interviews. And you can imagine people like The Rock, they get asked all sorts of questions regarding Hollywood and star power and all these things. But one of the questions that he got asked was, what do you do for fun? And yeah. he was completely stumped um, because, you know, the person who interviewed him went through his LinkedIn, not his LinkedIn, his Instagram yeah. and realized that, you know, the, the, the rock, apart from recording movies and perhaps going to the gym and drinking tequila, there isn't too much out there that shows him having a good time. Um, and 
following that that interview that he had you know he recorded a video on the beach in Hawaii just putting his feet up and I thought that was really inspiring for someone who's achieved so much in his life um, you know to, to, to take a step back and it all sort of works its way back down and yeah. this is you know one of the top performers in in his industry that a lot of people look up to so yeah I'm really pleased that we've gone on on sort of that yeah. point uh, but yeah that's, that's a great point Mike. Uh, I'm pleased that you mentioned about physical health and yeah. um, mental health as well because yeah. Again, one one of the things that I've tried to really work hard on um, over the last, call it 12, 15 months, is like my my um, sleep and, and my yeah. recovery. Yeah. Um, and I feel I've got I've got to a point now whereby usually I get up at about ten to six. Yeah. Um, be that whether I'm in an office day or I'm a work from home day. If I'm travelling, I'm up at five. Um, and I've got to a point now, I would say over the last two months, three months, it took me a while to get there, that I just don't feel tired, like I'm up, full yeah. of energy, yeah. um, because I've really tried to work on having a good routine before I go to bed, so that I sleep well, and then I'm rested well, and then when I'm getting up in the morning, like I'm, I'm, I'm on it. Yeah. Um, so I just think like this is a self-development area, yeah. like if you prioritise your physical health, if you prioritise your sleep routine, doing the right things like before you go to bed I'm not an expert on that I'm just all I've done is try to learn from actual experts and then try to incorporate those tips into my own routines but it's, it's made a difference and that definitely yeah. impacts your ability to perform yeah. in work like yeah. 100% like if you're going to bed at 12 o'clock at night because you're watching too much Netflix you're actually not then going to sleep till quarter to one one o'clock and you're up at six half six there's no way you can perform at your optimal level even if you think that you can and that you feel okay you will have dips in a day you know you won't be able to think as clearly you know, these are things that can have a big impact on your performance in work but don't often think about them as self-development yeah. areas but i yeah. think that they are yeah for sure for sure it's a fantastic way to to sort of round up Mike in terms of that point and it's, it's a great thing and I'm, sleep is definitely something that I need to work on so yeah no good I love it um, yeah. so this week as yeah. part of you that might be first time listeners we go through a tradition of sharing interview questions and sales preparation tips as well so um, it's Mike's week um, this week so um, Mike what is your interview question of the week that easy this week because keeping in keeping with the theme that we're talking about yeah what have you done to become a best sales professional? Really easy. Uh -huh. Obviously, yeah. it's super open-ended. You might get a yeah. candidate who asks you to actually confirm what it is that you're looking for an answer, which would be good yeah. because it would mean yeah. that they're, 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 quali they're qualifying, they're listening, yeah. they're trying mm -hmm. to understand before giving you an answer. But obviously, it's so open-ended, so someone yeah. could talk about a multitude of, of these things. But you're looking for them to be able to pick on a couple of different points because yeah. that way you know you've got someone there who is invested in improving yeah who um, is, 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 is wired in that sort of way as well, which is which is what you want. You know, we want growth mindset salespeople, not fixed mindset salespeople who think that they that they know everything. Um, yeah. they, they tend to not do that well. So I think it's just a really good good question and people can yeah. then take it from a professional standpoint or from a, um, a personal standpoint. Yeah. So, yeah. Excellent. Good. Right. Well, thank you, everyone, for listening. Really enjoyed that. Hopefully, everyone got something from it. And um, yeah, thank you all. We'll be back again with another episode next week. Bye for now. Bye for now. Well, that wraps up another episode of the Recruitment Roundup podcast. Thank you very much for listening to the show, to watching the show. Um, we really appreciate your support. It would be absolutely fantastic um, if you could give us a rating on apple on spotify give us a review and um, any feedback really really helps and is massively appreciated so thank you once again for joining us and we will hopefully see you again next week